So the Lord has been putting something on my heart lately that, that I've been wanting to do, but evidently it wasn't going to come about until now, until we had this particular freedom to do so. And one of the things that, that I want you to understand about the Word of God and some of these epistles that Paul wrote, these are conversations to a family. Paul wrote a lot of times at, at the end of his epistles, he would say that I want this epistle to be read to then Laodicea and then to send that epistle to you. I want you guys to be reading these letters to one another. Do you understand the Bible is more than just book, chapter, and verse? It was many years the Bible was out before they ever put book, chapter, and verse in it. These were letters that were written. Book, chapter, and verse is great. But I think it's time that as a family, Brother Steve, we start hearing the whole conversation. Have you ever felt like as a child when you were growing up around your parents? I know I did. There were secrets. There were things that they just didn't want us to know and stuff like that. And I'm, I found me a spot on the steps at night. You know, you creep down and you find that spot. Look, I see somebody laughing about that. Amen. I'm not the only one. So you find that spot because you want to hear. You don't just want a few select verses from your parents throughout the day and the information that they want to give you. We want the whole story. Do you understand that in your Christian walk, unless you have the whole story, you're not going to live out and go the story of Christ Jesus. Isn't that right, Will? If you don't have all the instructions and you don't follow and you've got goals and stuff left over, it's bad news, right? On the business, it's not going to work out because things are going to fall apart if you don't have the whole story. And one of the things that we run into uh, in denominational doctrines and stuff like that, they don't read the whole story. We pull out the books and the chapters and the verses that accommodate what we want to believe or what our parents have taught us or what the church or whatever, and this is what we do. If you don't do this, you're not saved. If you dress that way, you're not saved. If you don't show up on time, you're not saved. And all this other kind of really silly nonsense. It has nothing to do with the Word of God. It's traditions of men and it's superstition. So what God has put on my heart to do for our church family is to start the book of Ephesians. Amen. And it's going to work out for us because sometimes we're on time constraint. And when God says to stop, as soon as we get to a certain chapter, we'll be done. But over the next couple of weeks, amen, however long it goes, we're going to be in the book of Ephesians. So if you guys want to get out your Bibles today, those of you that have brought them with you, and I would encourage you because we don't have the PowerPoint here. i got a couple of TVs at home, and i got to find the, the, the base for them. And, and bring it in so we can have some scriptures up here. Hey, but if, if it's on your cell phone, whatever. You know, the gospel, if you want to follow along, that's fine. But we need to begin having a conversation with one another from the Word of God and not beating up each other to death with it or forcing this doctor or that doctor down their throat. What we need to do is take the Word of God and these letters in their entirety and then let the Holy Spirit speak to you and begin making the changes in your life that need to be made. Here's one thing that I discovered. I really want people to pay attention to what I'm saying to this, and maybe some other pastors and, uh, and lay ministers and things like that. It's easy to point out the sin in somebody's life. It's easy to come up and see if, like, somebody's a drug addict or an alcoholic. You know, some where the outward signs are, 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 uh, are very obvious. And it's real easy to go up to somebody and say, you need to sober up Oh, you need to be this. You need to be not watching that TV program. You need to be getting 40 hours a week at your work. And you need to be, and you need to be. And we set this, these standards on other people. That we don't know what they've been through in life. We don't know where God has been. And we're putting all these demands. And we're beating them over the head with the word of God. Because they're not who they're supposed to be in Christ. That, that doesn't work. You're just beating somebody to death, telling them you're not who you're supposed to be. But if we can give somebody a living example of Jesus Christ at that first John 4, 17, that says, because as I am, so are you in this world. If we give somebody that example, like Paul says, like I preached last week, he said, I'm pressing on towards the mark for the prize of a high calling in Christ Jesus. God knows that we are not at the finish line. So we have to meet people where they are and say, and not say, you're no good, you should be this way, but you're living this way. What I want to come today and say this, because Jesus started off with this scripture, 
Thank you, Lord, for calling that to my remembrance. Amen. Before I get out of here, why well, be crazy here today? And Jesus said what he did. The first thing that Jesus preached, and this is, you don't have to turn here. This is in Matthew chapter 4. I want you to hear this. Uh, starting in, 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 in verse 15. The land of Zebulun and the land of Bethlehem, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region in shadow of death, light has sprung up. And I want you to remember that for October 31st, because we're going to talk about something we got going on, and Jesus being the light of the world. Amen. And, uh, and here's what it says. And from that time, in verse 17, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Can I get an amen? Now, we hear that word repent. We've heard it preached to us in a way where usually when you hear that word repent, it's hot, it's heavy, it's, it's addressing sin. Amen? There's another half of what Jesus said. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That is not a condemning verse. That is repent, get right. Because guess what? The kingdom of God is here. Jesus Christ is here. Your deliverance, your freedom, your, your, your sanity, coming back into your right mind, healing in your health and your finances, amen? True recovery is found in the kingdom of God. And the only way we get that is when we repent, Caleb, not just of our sin. Getting rid of that list of 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10, drunkenness, idolatry, uh, uh, fornication, homosexuality, all that kind of stuff that, that, that God says we have to put off. Amen? That is available to us right now, the freedom from those things. So when you think about repentance, Steve, we, like, like God's like us, we've been through some things, Amen? We've been down some hard roads. When I think of repent, I think, God, I better stop doing this mess. I better change. Don't just apply that to sin. I want you to say, I'm going to repent in my thinking today. I'm going to repent of all this other stuff that I've heard, and I'm going to come back to the Word of God. And I'm going to believe that in my, in my repentance, the kingdom of God is at hand. It's here. It showed up. The pearly gates you have access. The Word of God says this. If you are saved, you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Can I get an amen? You are no longer here. You are seated with Him. And that's why I want to get our mindset today. I want us to repent of our worldly thinking. Amen. And I want us to understand the kingdom of God is at hand for us today. Amen. Can I get an amen? Yes, that's right. You guys better be shouting real loud up there, amen, up there in the peanut gallery, amen. So let's begin walking through this letter today in the epistle of Paul to the Ephesians. We're going to see what the Holy Spirit has to say to us, some very practical things. I'm going to keep an eye on my clock. When we hit the certain spot, we are going to stop, and we're going to spend some time in prayer, amen. And then we're going to spend some time in a jubilee up in this place. Because I think that the, the best thing that we can get, and all I get is get understanding. Isn't that right? Get understanding. And that's what I want you people to have. I don't want you to have some superstitious, denomination-based, goofy thought process going on. I want you to have the entire word of God. That's what God did to me. That's how he raised me up as a pastor and everything else. Was by taking you through exactly what, what I've been through. And that's what God did. He said, stop breaking it up in the book, chapter, and verse right now. And read the whole thing. Listen to the whole conversation. Because you're going to start to see, number one, through these letters, Paul preaches the gospel throughout the whole thing. He preaches repentance, but he's not shouting me down the Lord. Amen? He gives us practical instruction. He tells us who we are in Christ Jesus. He gives us, through, and I listen to Paul's conversation. Now, I love to preach the paint off the walls, and hopefully I'll get to do that a little bit today. We get some fire up preaching here, too. But I also want us, amen, John, I want us to get understanding. I want you to hear today, Charles, the whole conversation, not just bits and pieces, 
Because what happens when we only get bits and pieces of a conversation and we run off of it? Bad things happen, don't they? Yeah. Then rumors start and just all kinds of nastiness. So we want the whole story. Look, I've got a police officer in here. Isn't it good to have all the facts in the whole story? Because if not, anything you say can and will be used against you. Amen. Praise God. So let's open up the Word of God. I want you to have this five this morning, not only excited, but I want you to understand that God is going to pour something in you this morning directly from the throne. It's going to change you. You are going to look at the Word of God differently, and I guarantee when you leave here today, the next time you pick up your Bible and read it, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be like, wait, this tastes different. This tastes fresh. This is good. Amen? So let's get into this thing. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are in Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. The faithful. Are we faithful today? Amen. Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He's not even into the epistle yet, and he's already telling you who you are, what you have. The kingdom of God is at hand. Do you hear the kingdom of God in that verse? He said that you have been blessed with all spiritual blessings, Will, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And once we start living with that repentant mindset that the kingdom of God is here, that my physical body might be here, but I'm walking with the Lord Jesus, we begin to tap into something that is so far beyond ourselves, Sister Helen, these spiritual blessings that are in heavenly places that we didn't know we had access to. Now, I'm not talking about a prosperity gospel today, Sister. What I'm talking about is when you're being crushed in life, circumstance, and situation. You know that you can call on that name of Jesus. You can grab hold of that spiritual blessing in a heavenly place. And you have something to hang on to. When the world is falling apart and giving you nothing but, but curses and sin and, and, and thorns and nastiness. You can sit back and say, I've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. If I need strength in my body, something spiritual in me. I've already been blessed with Christ. The devil doesn't want you to believe that. Are you hearing what Paul is already saying? And just in agreeing, the kingdom of God is at hand in your life. You have been blessed. But most of us today, we don't believe that. We believe that we're nobody. We believe that we're just going to go from one garbage situation to the next. I hear my kids talk about it. Yeah, oh well, it's just a car for the course, you know. It's like standard operating procedure. We need to change our mindset. Why? Because the kingdom of God is at hand. We need to repent of that stinking thinking and understand that any situation, Steve, that we're going through, any temptation, any addiction, anything that's coming against us in our life, John, we have spiritual blessings that we can count on, that we can grab into, that we can access and help fight this fight. Amen? Now listen to this. Verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Do you understand, Sister Bark? You didn't choose this. He chose you before the foundation of the world was laid. He knew you. He knew your name. Amen. He knew he was going to breathe the breath of life into you. Praise God. And this is what it says. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted to be loved. Listen, that predestination, I know this King James, boy, that sounds real fancy. Look, let me pull that down for you here. All this stuff that's going on, these spiritual blessings that we have, this predestination that, that God is, is calling us to him, amen, is to the praise of the glory of his grace. Where sin abounds, Charles, or gratitude God's grace does much more bound. Shouldn't we be praising God for the glory of his grace in our lives 
Was there anybody else in here that ruined their lives like I did? And God came along. The name of Jesus got spoken into a lot. And thanks, Lord, to change, God began to turn it around for you. Amen. Is there anybody in here that wants to give praise to the glory of God's grace? Is there any marriage that's in here today that was saved by the glory of God's grace? Amen. Or maybe somebody in here that you might have been lost thought I'd never have another relationship. And God brought somebody along to you in here. That's God's grace. I'm going to stop right now. And I'm going to give God thanks right now. I'm going to praise Him for the glory of His grace in my life. Because it's nothing that I've done, sister. It's nothing that you've done. It was the work that Jesus Christ did on that cross. Amen. The Word of God says this, that the law came from Moses, but grace and truth came from Christ Jesus. Amen. That in these last days, in this dispensation of grace, amen, we can discover who we are in Christ Jesus. Knowing I've been predestined. Let me tell you about that predestination. When I was in my addiction, in the middle of just death and dying with that thing. Sister, I would call out to God and I would say, Jesus, this is not my destiny to die like this. Help me. Don't let me die. This isn't my destiny. And any of you that have ever called on the name of Jesus Christ, you know these words that I'm saying to you are absolutely 100% true. You know that it's not your destiny to continue to live an unholy life. To continue to live with your, your, your finances in a wreck all the time. Amen. No stability in your life. Praise God. God wants you to praise Him to the riches of the glory of His grace. And if you will tap into the grace and mercy that's in Him, as being presented to you today, God will change you. He will transform you. Don't go out of here beating yourself to death today, saying, I failed Jesus. Maybe you ought to change the conversation and open up the Bible and say this. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who's blessed me with all spiritual blessings. One of those spiritual blessings is freedom from addiction and sin. Amen. Another spiritual blessing is peace. Who wants peace in their house? I have a 25, what is it, 25 now? 24 year old son. And then two daughters, and two daughters live at home, 21 and 19. I pray for peace every day. Amen. Not that they're fighting. I'm scared of the girls. They beat me up now. They tell me all the time. Praise God. But it's God's grace, people. Listen. Grace is not to be abused. Okay? It's not so you can go out there and have your license to sin and go do your party and then you ask your business and say, hey, I, I pray the prayer, man. I'm good. It's under grace. No. Grace is there to change you. Grace, if you like this message, don't you? Grace. Grace is there to change you. Your mother gave you a wonderful name. Maybe she was experiencing the grace of God in her life at that time. I don't know. But it's the grace of God that's going to see you through. Because we all need that grace and that mercy. And if you understand that's one of your spiritual blessings, you will start praising God for the glory of that grace in your life. And you will start using that grace to change, to become more like Jesus. You'll see your relationships change. Your marriages change. Amen? If some of y'all are moving towards marriage, you're going to see trust and things begin to change to where that marriage covenant and commitment is not going to be so scary. You know? Jump down to verse 7 here. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, praise God, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, listen, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Some of y'all, I don't know if you've heard the scripture in Isaiah, where God says, he says many times, he said, I would have gathered you like a mother hen. Amen. And grab the chicks under the wings. Paul is speaking from the Old Testament. And here he's talking about that. That God, through Christ Jesus, wants to gather you back to him. He wants to restore you back to him through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. 
Here's what I want you to understand. You have inheritance that's worth more than you can understand. Amen. The devil wants to keep you focused on this world and this life. He wants you to see your world and your life as garbage that you never have enough and don't have what you need. That you're always falling short some way, somehow. Well, let me tell you. Again, God's grace is drawing you back to Him today. Amen. He wants to gather you together. He wants you to understand that there's an inheritance. There's something valuable waiting on you. Don't walk away from this thing. Amen. Don't give up now. Praise God. Amen. That we should be to the praise of His glory. Who first trusted in Christ. In whom you also trusted. After that you heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you believed. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Is there anybody in here today that's not a believer? That's not been seen? Amen? Well, praise God. Everybody in here knows, knows the Lord today, and that is a good thing. Because that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of His glory. Let me say this. God puts the Holy Spirit inside of you, and that's what you use to access the spiritual blessings, Brother Will. And we do that through prayer, supplication in the spirit. Remember I preached on that in Philippians last week. And what does it say? May be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding should guard your hearts and minds. Amen. That's what I'm shooting for today, people. Is I want to build a family that understands this word of God. Who understands that God called you before time even began. And you're willing to walk with me and live out that destiny. Because I realized one day that it was not my destiny to die a drug addict. Amen? And you can see today that that was not my destiny, was it? God had a different plan for my life. Why would you be any different? Most of y'all haven't done the garbage that I've done. I think that God would show you even more favor than me if you would just tap into this thing. Amen? Thing again. Verse 15. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. I want you to hear this. Because this is how I feel about you guys. And when I pray over the congregation, this is where I go and I get my prayers for y'all. Just saying, I mean, I pray for you guys individually, like if y'all have a personal problem or something like that, the Holy Spirit hits me. But I want you guys to tap into this. I want you to mark this in your Bible. This is not just for me, not just for the pastor and his family. This is for everybody here. Listen to this, okay? Verse 16, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Listen to what he prays. And I want you to start desiring this for yourself, for your family, and for this church. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Do you hear that? God wants to give us a spirit of revelation and wisdom and knowledge in Him. Amen. The Bible says all the training and wisdom and knowledge are found in him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. God wants you to know the hope of his calling. That there is an inheritance. That's the hope, Brother Will. That inheritance of eternal life. Resurrection from the dead. Amen. New life and eternity with God and with the family of God. Amen. We got to know the hope of that calling. It's real. And what is the riches of the glory of his, of his inheritance in the saints? That inheritance will of eternal life, that's the inheritance of the saints. There's riches in that thing. The Word of God, written Word, can never describe, will never be able to describe what that inheritance is. John tries to do it in the book of Revelation. He does a good job, but it's still, 
eye has not seen or ear heard nor has entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for them that love him. Amen. And I believe that every one of you in here today that you love the Lord Jesus, that you love God. Amen. And this is what God wants for you. Wisdom, revelation, understanding. And here's why I want you to know. And, uh, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who are to believe according to the working of his mighty power. Do you guys understand you have lived out that verse these last couple weeks? God brought this church body to a fire. Amen? Weren't we done? I thought I'd I thought I retire this pastor last week on Tuesday. Tammy and Kevin had other plans. They said it ain't going to happen. What God did for me would come out of the riches of his glory. Come out of that predestination. I wasn't predestined to quit being a preacher, quit being a pastor because I resigned from someplace else. Amen? God just said, I got to do it over here so you can have the freedom to operate and people can grow with me out from underneath religious dignity, bigotry, and hypocrisy. Amen? God, look, it is what it is. I'm not, I'm not blaspheming or, 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 or shaking anybody or anything like that. But I'm not going to pastor and operate underneath religious hypocrisy and bigotry. Or people that are going to set an impossible standard for others because they've reached the point in their life that everybody else should meet that standard. And not say, I've met that standard. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump down off of my high horse. And this is what I'm going to do. Hey, brother, God, God got me from where I was to here, Charles. I know you've been talking to me, and you said you're here and you want to be there. But brother, guess what? I'm going to meet you where you're at. I'm not going to tell you about how you failed and you didn't get here. I'm going to say, brother, God took me there. This is what I'm going to do. Come on. Come on. Take it right on up here with me. Hey, Ben, turn around. Say something for Jesus. Well, I... Believe in Jesus and I'm here this day. Amen. Don't go nowhere. Get your hand. Amen. God took me from there to here. I didn't do it alone. He put good people in my life. It did just magically show up one day. I had to come out again. And I'd come to this brother come on. I'd have said, hey, you're a good HX specialist and all this kind of stuff. Jesus, brother, I've seen fire in your eyes over here when I've been preaching that word of God. Man, I know that God has a destiny for you. Come on, get up out of that seat. God will take you from where you're at to where you're supposed to be. And this is the church that I'm going to be that will leave our place, our seat of honor. Amen. Say something for Jesus. Amen. It's simple as that. I love you. Come on. Come on. Amen. Mike saw me come and he rang. <laughs> he said he got a call. Praise God. That's a okay. Amen. Who's next? Sister, what's your name? Becca. Do you know that you were predestined by God to be conformed to the image of the Son of His love? Do you know that God wants to take you from where you're at to where He has shown you? I know God is filled you with your hands. He has spoken something in your life and told you to do something for him. You see yourself as being somebody or something in Christ that's far beyond where you're at right now, right? Your hand, come on, sis. Come on. Here, let me show you. This is the way to the altar. This is the way to Jesus. Amen. He's going to take you from where you're at to where you see yourself. Do you see yourself married, a wife, all that kind of stuff, a mother? Amen. Well, my wife right there, that was her vision one day. She said, I said, what do you want out of life? What do you want out of ministry? She said, I just want to be a mom. Amen. I think she does a good job of it. She feeds us. She moms us to death in this place. Amen. So God's going to take you from where you are to that vision that you see. You say something to Jesus. Don't tell me. Tell them. You changed my life. Amen. He changed my life. Oh my goodness. Do you understand? That even a child. Here, come on, why? 
Hey, look, Wyatt sees himself as a guitar player for Jesus. I believe that. He brought a guitar and everything with him today. I don't even know what little sister sees, but come on up. Grand sister, come on up. Here, let me show you. Because you know what I'm going to do, Wyatt? I'm going to use my gifts and my talents and abilities that God gave me. And I'm going to get off my horse and I'm not going to worry about playing. I'm going to worry about teaching you guys your tools and teach you how to play. And then one day you're going to go from there to here because you had somebody come alongside you. Amen. And show you that you were predestined. Say something good for Jesus. He said, Jesus was always watching me. He was always right behind me. Amen. <laughs> you know God speaks to me about y'all right on the past. He ain't telling me your dirty laundry. Okay, maybe some of y'all need to repent today. Praise God. <laughs> what I'm saying is this. It is, is I want you to see beyond yourself. And I want you to look around at the people that are in this family that will help you get to Jesus. That will help you get where you want to be. I know you see me. I'm the pastor up here. I got the Praise Project thing and all that kind of stuff. Listen, let me tell you what Praise Project is. I teach people guitar lessons. That's it. I'm teaching somebody how to play guitar, and I just slapped an identity on it that I liked. Hey, this, this looks neat, but in its simplest form, all I'm doing is sitting down with another kid and showing him some chords on the guitar. I'm pouring into someone's life. And, and I was able to put that praise project on. That was just one of my things that I did. Amen. And these kids are excited about it. But that was my identity, my thing that God gave me. What's your vision, Steve? What about you, Bill? John? John's going to build a smoker in a century for us, man. We're going to be smoking meats for Thanksgiving and Christmas for now and whatever. I got people on the, uh, uh, Michael Tay, I got people on the town council in the mayor saying, what are we going to do the next Paul roast? Amen. They're excited about these things because. We are taking Jesus to the people. And we're going to do just like I did with these guys up here today. Is we're going to go and grab somebody's hand and say, Hey, look, I know you're struggling. You should be here. Let me show you how to get there. Or at least let me get you where God got me. And then you can go on farther than I'm going. Amen? I want everybody up here and I want every kid to get up there and just blow me away. I want to see the next preacher come up out of this thing that, that it just, I have to sit down because the preacher's so good. They'll say, we don't want to hear you. We want to hear them. And I will not be offended by that. There'll come a day when I'm not up here playing for It's these kids that are leading the way. Amen. And if we get that mindset and get that attitude, because I'm, I'm going to wrap it up right now with the Spirit saying, just that, that, that's it for Ephesians today. But if we come together as a family, we come together as a community, because look, I already know, and I don't pull you guys up because you're more sinners than anybody else, amen. But I'm pulling up with the Holy Spirit puts on my heart to, to pull up here. Like the song says, I've had dreams, I've had visions, I've even held them in my hand. Sometimes they've slipped through. I see people in here who are people of vision, people that have, have been hurt, who presented their vision to people that said, I don't like your vision. I want you to have my vision. The vision that I carry as the pastor of this church is this. Get you across the finish line and help you in any way that I can. What is your vision? What is your desire? Let me pour into you to raise you up so that you can go beyond anything that I ever could. If, if, if God would allow me to build a, a, a 30 member congregation, when I'm done, one of y'all are going to go out here and have a fun. Amen. Like Jesus said, I'm going to be with the Father. If you guys are going to do these works, it's so much more. And if we have that mindset as we pour into others in our lives, then guys, you're going to do so much more than I ever did for Jesus. You're going to do so much more, Charles, than I ever did. You're going to do so much more with families and kids than I could ever hope for. Why? Brother, you're young. You and your sister, my God, you've got your whole life ahead of you, son. You're going to do amazing things for Jesus.
Jesus. These kids, they were up here putting this stuff together this morning. Amen, like nobody's business. So, if we get the youngsters, this generation, right? Look, God did this in a certain way. I see this now. So, if we focus on the youngsters right here and we pour into them like they're supposed to, we'll have a godly next generation. If we take someone like this young lady right here, because this, this is where our next generation comes from. She gets married, she starts having kids. That, that's the next one that comes in. Amen. So encourage her. She wants to be a mom. I'm, are, are you engaged? Are you married? Or not yet. But you're believing for those things. Now, hold on. Let's, let's keep it real. You guys all go grab a seat. Go, go grab a seat. Go grab a seat. <laughs> Listen, hold on. I can stand up here right now. And I could beat her to death with the word of God. I could call her fornicator, sinner, and all this other kind of stuff and say, repent. Is she going to repent if I come to her like that? Absolutely not. Because I've come to my wife like that before and I know how that works. Uh -uh. No, that's like putting water on a grease fire and it works out. No. What I want to say is this. Let me give you a testimony. You see me up here today as pastor, me and my wife, and everything about that. Lois and I started in reverse. We started in fornication. I wasn't living for Jesus, neither was she at the time. Amen. We had, she was still legally married to another man at the time. And then we had Jonathan and Evelyn. Did you get your divorce before we had McKenna? So we had Jonathan and Evelyn. Jonathan and Evelyn. Evelyn, then we had divorce. And then we had McKenna. No, then we had to get married until 2004. Two months after the little one was born. Okay? Do you understand? I preach these things up here because this is what God did for me. He didn't beat me to death because I wasn't where I was supposed to be. He came and said, Scott, let me show you who you can be. And let me meet you where you are so that I can get you there. So what I'm going to say is this to you today, Sister Hay. That you're not the only person that's in that boat or been in that boat that has that desire or has a man in your life that doesn't know whether he wants to Make a commitment or not. Amen. But you know what we can do for you? We can pray for you. We can believe for you. We can give you testimonies like, like mine and Lois. Look, I guarantee you, Lois and I ain't the only ones that didn't start off the right way. Look, I see some looks on some faces in the back row back there. Praise God. Amen. Listen, we've all made mistakes. We've all fallen short. Amen. And if we were all in the law, Officer Brown will be taking most of us to jail here today. But we are under grace. And that's what I want you to understand today, sister. I want you to keep coming to this church. Because you have a vision and a desire in your life that most women have. Amen. And we want to pray for that for you. Because I believe that God is going to meet you where you're at. And take you from where you are to where you're supposed to be in Him. And it's going to be a glorious journey, sister. Because you are going to go from glory Christ Jesus. You know what? Once you start doing that, the other people in your life, they'll start changing. Amen. I can't tell you how many times God fixed me through her. Amen. She started doing the right thing and I had to do the right thing. You guys still love God in here today? Do you feel a spirit of realness? That God wants to meet you where you're at? That God has put a pastor and a body of Christ with you that says, we're not here to condemn or play religious games or spout a bunch of scripture at you. We want to meet you where you are and say, there's the mark of the prize of a high calling in Christ Jesus. Let me show you how to aim for that thing. Let me teach you how to shoot away. Amen. Let me teach you how to get back up after you've fallen down. Do you know that that's a skill, getting up after you've fallen down? A lot of times, I just laid I didn't have that skill in my life. For about 18 years, I laid down as a drug addict. But then the Holy Spirit spoke to me that night, Officer Brown. He said, because as I am, so are you in this world. And I didn't look anything like Jesus. I was doing drugs and looking at stuff I shouldn't be looking at. And that night, he touched me. He delivered me, transformed me, and changed me. And he began leading me to a better place. And that's what I would like to do. If you guys would give me that honor and that privilege is your pastor to do that with you today. To lead you to that place. That's all I want to do. Amen. So what I'd like to do right now is I'd like to, I'm going to open up the altar. I'm going to do some prayer.
Shall we start with you?